Hi, and welcome back to another episode on how to hack. And today we'll be learning about cross-site request forgery. So what exactly is cross-site request forgery? No worries. I know there are a lot of technical terms in the area of ethical hacking and penetration testing, but all you got to do is just break down what is going on when it comes to the terms. So over here, as you can see, I'm actually on WebGoat. So WebGoat is a vulnerable web application system for us to learn about ethical hacking and penetration testing on web application platforms. So right here, we have cross-site request forgery. So the whole idea of it is that the hackers will actually craft their own forms and then after which they will send it over to an authenticated user who is trying to go into a site. So that's the whole idea of cross-site, meaning that the form is actually hosted on a completely different site and the hacker could change the content of it and then send it over to the user who is already authenticated to the site, hence request forgery. So if you're logged in to say an e-commerce site to your social media platform and what the hackers could do is they could give you a link and once you click onto the link, all right, because you're authenticated to the site, it will insert those instructions on your behalf. So the whole idea is cross-site request forgery. We can go ahead and take a look at the exercises. So here they have a really simple way of demonstrating the attack to perform. So in this case, you have a link, all right? And the link goes to say bank.com and it does a transfer of money. All right, so it does a transfer of money right here and it states the following, okay? Account number from, account number two, and then followed by the amount of $100,000, all right? So it may say, view my pictures. And when you clicked on it, that's it, game over. All your money is going to be transferred over to a completely separate and different account number. So that's the whole idea behind it. And that's the whole idea behind how cross-site request forgery can be done with a simple GET request. All we got to do now is look at the following. All right, so we have the basic GET cross-site request forgery exercise. And if you trigger the form here from an external source, okay, and now we are on an internal source here, which is submit query. So if I go ahead and click on it, you'll see the following. Success, false, and there's a null for the flag. And it states on the left side, appears the request came from the original host. So the web form over here, as you can see, is hosted on the same IP address that's hosting the web good platform. All right, so what we can do next is to craft our own payload. So all we got to do is do a right click and do an inspect element and see where exactly is the form going into. So on the bottom, we have the inspector. All right, so in web developer, you can use it either with your Firefox, with Chrome, whichever the browser it is, doesn't matter. Okay, you'll be able to see where we're taking action into. And then of course, there is a submit type. All right, so you have input type here, submit, and the name is equal to submit, and you end the form right here, as simple as that. So you can actually craft out your own form. So in my case, what I'm going to do now is to show you the form that we have crafted. So I'm going to go ahead and enter terminal, and we'll zoom a little more so it's easier for you to see, and I can go into desktop, and I've already created a form to show and demonstrate to you how it looks like. So I can enter cat, all right, webgoat, csrf, dot HTML, hit enter on this, and we can see the form that we have crafted here. So we are following pretty much exactly what is needed in order for us to submit into the web Goat application server. So here we have the IP address of 127.0.0.1. So of course, in the real world on the internet domain, you would have to specify the domain name of the website, all right? So it could be an e-commerce site, a social media platform, whichever the case is. And of course here, we have the same input type, submit equals submit, and the same input name here, CSRF. And of course, this is a hidden and value equal false. So once you have set all this forward, all right, you can actually go ahead and open up the file. So here I'm on the desktop. And of course, you can see a lot of payloads that we have created in regards to web application penetration testing in regards to penetration testing and ethical hacking as a whole. So I really encourage you to subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of all the latest cybersecurity tutorials that we have. And of course, turn on notifications so that you can be informed immediately when new tutorials come up. All right, so I'll go ahead and double click onto the following. So here we have WebGoat CSRF, right? Double clicked on this and we can see right here. Okay, we got a following form. So all I'm going to do now is go ahead and click submit. And of course, you see a problem here that's happening and we're on a completely different browser, which is why it's not working. However, if I was to go back here and I copy the file, okay, copy the file, I go back to the Firefox browser in which we are logged in as the user. I open a new tab, I paste it right here and I hit enter. And now we're back onto the same file and I click submit query. That's it. Congratulations. Appears you made the request from a separate host. So that's it. As quickly as that, we're able to launch the attack by using a separate form. The next question is, how can we take this to the next level? All right, so if I go back into the platform here, what I can do now is to go ahead and copy the file. All right, we can copy the file over 
from web code csrf.html that we just created and I can paste it to our own web application server and we can host it very quickly. So what I can do is just go ahead and copy web code, all right, csrf.html and I copy the var .html, and I hit enter on this and of course we get permission denied. So no worries, enter super user do, hit enter on that, enter the password for a user account. Once we do that, we will now be able to say list var www.html, hit enter on that too. And now we got the file right there, web code, csrf.html. And I can navigate now, all right, to the application server that we've created. So I can go into 127.0.0.1, all right, followed by slash web code, csrf.html, hit enter on this again. And now we have hosted our hacking server, which has the fake form. All right, so all I got to do now is click submit query. And likewise, we're able to get the flag we get a success as true and congratulation appears you made a request from a separate host. So as quickly as that, we're able to create our own web form that we can send to users. And once the user clicked on it, that's it, game over. Just like the banking example we saw earlier, we can create instructions and send it over to our application server because the user is already authenticated into the website, which means that a hacker does not need to have your username nor your password, and you'll be able to make your account do things that they want them to. So once again, I hope you learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll try my best to answer any of the questions. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.